on this episode of La Peef, let's talk. Like no, there's I mean, a definitely there's differences between you know different types of schools. I mean, there's there's uh non HBCU schools that are nowhere near functioning to the level of certain HBU HBCU schools. So like, what are you, what are we, what is the thing we're really trying to say? What, that's not, so th what I inter, and you can correct me. Because it's online. not like HBCUs are just the lowest functioning. That's not schools. what he's saying either. I know, really. and I'm not saying that's what he's saying. I'm asking, what is the thing that's being said? What is the argument being made? Because we're not comparing Harvard. Well, no, she's at, hold on, she's asking me. The argument being made is that people that attend PWIs by mm -hmm. and large, and most of them are non colored, right? They're not people of color, <laughs> non colored, it's, or whatever you know what I mean, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's part of their culture, it's ingrained in them, it's ingrained in them to contribute, give back. All right, y'all, moving on to our next topic, which is our HBCUs helping or hindering Ooh. the transition <laughs> to reality compared to PWIs? Are HBCUs helping or hindering the transition to reality compared to PWIs? What's a PWI What's a again? Private white institution. Private white institution. Or no, it ain't private, is it? Predominantly. Ain't no private, ain't no private white institution. Well, people used white, to use yeah. it as private. That's what I always thought it was, but. Yeah. I mean, it's and it's mainly well. I've heard it used is mainly like Harvard, Yale, Princeton. It's something. predominantly. But you can white. say predominantly. I think it just means private. mostly, like yeah, predominantly. Sure. Predominantly, yeah, it's like private. It's cool. or... I, either way. Like, All right. So now, okay. Now we got clarification. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Let me see who's who's looking like they anxious right now. Go ahead, Rilla. Man, let's go. Look, <laughs> he so, looked anxious. <laughs> yeah, because I've heard. So listen, my twenty years in it, I've heard this for years. I've heard this. You know, people that went, I, I know some really dope people that went to Morehouse, Spelman, Clark, um, that dog on Fort Valley State, so on and so forth, right? right? And keep in mind also in Atlanta, right there, you got Georgia Tech, up in Athens, you got UGA. And so there was always these conversations about people who are um, attending HBCUs, are they adequately prepared? And, uh, you know, what I find interesting is that, like, we don't look at, <clears throat> we don't look at um, other schools or private schools. We don't look at certain um, Christian schools that have been um, traditionally for a particular group of people, mainly uh, people uh, who are non-color, right? Give us an example. So what's, what's the one? Liberty University, right? Never heard. I, I don't right know. so I'm traditionally sorry. liberty university is uh non-color now they 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 have started admitting obviously sorry admitting people in there but traditionally it's a, it's a non-color school right my point being is that the idea that you can't prepare someone to function in the real world because they attend a predominantly black school with people that look like them i just think that's asinine ignorant and it dumbfounds me um when i've seen some of the most successful people um i know this is this may or may not get under anton's skin but when you think about um and if you be objective if you think about the vice president of the united states who went to a hbcu right and if you look at her career not the decision she made or how that affected people with so on and so forth but if you just look at her career from uh, what district attorney to senator to vice president of the United States? I mean, that's from HBCU. If you look at um, some of the alumni of HBCUs, man, these are some people who have made significant impact on our society and have been able to function in the real world. So, are then how come the universe? Then how come the colleges themselves are still suffering? Well, right? when you look at the Yales, when you look at the. Sure. Uh, Sure. The Harvards or whatever, mm -hmm. they have endowments, they have alumni right. that so they are overly successful and they come back and they donate and they create, um, you know, yep. a platform yep. to where the school will always be successful and they yep. don't have to continue to go to the government in order to continue to get the funding or whatever, so on and so forth. Why mm -hmm. why aren't the, the, the institutions, if they are competing at the same level that some of these other institutions are competing, right? Why aren't their alumni well, 
um, pouring into and the and the school themselves aren't a reflection mm -hmm. of that of of what it is that you just cited as one sure. example. Yep. So um, I would say culturally, right? Um, that is a <clears throat> lot different. So like other people on the panel that have been to any college or university, right? How often do you contribute back to that university, right? Of people that are a part of uh, Greek organizations. And I'm talking about people of color specifically. And I'm answering your question, Anton. People that are part of Greek organizations and they claim this and they claim that. How current are they on their dues? Culturally, um, I think, and this is not a popular opinion. Culturally, I don't think we understand the importance of giving back or supporting or building up our own or, you know, paying it forward to your alma mater. I didn't listen. I didn't. I had some college didn't fully graduate college and I still give back to my alma mater because I understand the importance of it and the work that they do. I think I think that it's not necessarily a good thing to say that people who go to these colleges don't understand the importance of giving back. I think that what's being missed here is that Yale and whatnot were founded like a hundred or more years before the first. Fair, okay. Huh? I don't know that it's fair to take it that far back and say that they have head start because we know now. And what we also what? know, it's not fair to what you so, being in this country and knowing how things are and have been knowing the obstacles and whatnot, you're talking about, it's not fair to acknowledge that there was a head start. Point. No, all I'm saying is that if we're comparing Yale or Harvard, like it's not the same because those schools were out way before. He, but he's not saying those schools specifically. He, he said, specifically you said, you said those say, schools. I and know, I'm not, but that's not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that they have to have a hundred billion dollar endowment, but they aren't even functioning on their own. Like no, there's I mean, a definitely there's differences between you know different types of schools. I mean, there's there's uh, non HBCU schools that are nowhere near functioning to the level of certain HBU, HBCU schools. So like, what are you, what are we, what is the that's thing we're really trying to say? What, that's not, so what I interpret, and you can correct because me. Because it's not mind. like HBCUs are just the lowest functioning. That's not schools. what he's saying either. I know, really. and I'm not saying that's what he's saying. I'm asking what is the thing that's being said? What is the argument being made? Because we're not comparing Harvard. Hold on, she's at, hold on, she's asking me. The argument being made is that people that attend PWIs mm -hmm. by and large, and most of them are non-colored, right? They're not people of color. <laughs> non-colored. Or whatever, you know what I mean, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's part of their culture. It's ingrained in them. It's ingrained in them to contribute, give back. 